listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting The Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. How do you love your neighbor? What are the opportunities you have to love your neighbor? We have friends here in the St. Louis area who do a great job of that, reaching out to show love to their neighbors, both in deed and in word. And joining us today are friends from Christian Friends of New Americans, the Reverend Dr. Stanish Stanley, his executive director of CFNA. Pastor, welcome back. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. And you brought along a team member from Christian Friends of New Americans, Marlene Schrader. She's a friend of family mentor, Welcome so much. Welcome to the the program, Marlene. Thank you. Thank you for having us. I am excited to learn more about what CFNA does today. Just in general, what has been the work of CFNA most recently, Pastor? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, Christian Friends of New Americans, as many of you know, is uh, an organization that reaches out to our uh, new neighbors, especially coming from different countries as refugees or even as immigrants, and uh, reaching out to them with Christ-driven love and service. And also witness is basically what CFNA does. And so, lately, we've been very busy with uh, things like uh, our Driver's Ed, which has been a really busy program or activity for us, spending on how many people are coming in to get their licenses, permits, and all that. There's also the regular stuff of uh, sewing with uh, ladies, especially people, ladies from Afghanistan, which is also a very busy pro- activity for us. And so those are at least one or two of the events that are activities that are very, very, very busy for CFNA. But recently also had our fundraiser, the trivia fundraiser, which happened on April 1st. And coming out of COVID for the past three years, we were doing it online. And then suddenly we decided to, okay, it's it's time to go on site again. And so we did it at Webster Gardens. We had so more than 200 people attend, 25 tables. And uh, it, was, it was a great event just to see how the people of God come together again and to uh, to support an organization and also the work of uh, Christian Friends of New Americans, loving neighbors, but of course, being a part of that mission, just to see that was great. Mm. Help us understand the the size, the scope of what <clears throat> of what CFNA does for these people. You you talk about some of the programs, but but how many people does CFNA help in a in a month in a year? Mm-hmm. What's that scope like? Yeah, those those numbers will vary mm-hmm. from time to time. But at the same time, we uh, you know last year we had the main resettling agency, the International Institute of Saint Louis, bring in somewhere around 1,000 people, wow. uh, mostly from Afghanistan, of course, because they were all fleeing uh, Taliban and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, here, they they quoted that it might be somewhere around 800 or, or so people who might be here. Some of the la- recent arrivals are from Afghani, are, are Afghani refugees who were caught up in refugee camps or military camps in Albania. And so, uh, so all those people are there, but at the same time, we have others as well. At CFNA, we are a ministry. We are a Lutheran church agency. We are a ministry that seeks to serve and love our neighbors and so some of our activities, as I said, draw in most of the people are the driving program, the sewing thing. We have an after-school tutoring for kids. So I would put the number somewhere around uh, in a month. Uh, and these will be people who will come back again and again mm-hmm. because they have multiple visits for for learning driving or ESL or whatever. Uh, I would put the number at somewhere around 100 or 200 at least mm-hmm. in, a, in a month yeah. that, will, that will be visiting the center. Uh, one of our main uh, objectives is definitely over the over the course of the year, we would love to connect with 200 new people mm. at least. Every, and every year we have passed 200. Mm-hmm. So it's um, making connections with new people through the various activities that we do. And our hope always has been through our witness and through our service, we would in, be able to invite some of these friends who would be interested to be seekers of Jesus, but also join our Lutheran community in our congregations. You mentioned that many of the people that CFNA serves today are Afghan refugees Mm -hmm. who have come here in the last couple of years seeking a peaceful place, which Mm -hmm. uh, reminds me of the name of the the center where CFNA serves so many people, the Peace Center. Center. Just paint a picture for us to help us understand what have many of the people that that come to the Peace Center have been through Mm -hmm. or what they've come here for, what they're they're leaving in order to, to come to the U.S. and specifically they end up in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, the refugee experience is all about alienation and disruption. It could be a real threat to their life or a perceived threat to their life, which is which is definitely they believe that it's going to happen to them. And so just just take the example of the Taliban taking over Afghanistan in 2020. 
in 2021 uh, it was somewhere in august i think august 15th and then suddenly people are fleeing on their airplanes and all that and trying to get out just to save their lives or the lives of their loved ones and so uh, they they pretty much kind of leave back everything that they know what they have built what they have lived out it's almost like saying that uh, you live a great wonderful life here in let's say st louis and suddenly your neighbors become a- angry with you or violent with you and you're fleeing this place and you land up in india where i am originally from <laughs> and you've got to pick up a new language build up new friends set up a whole new system for yourself you've got to navigate culture over there the language and the system and that's pretty much where americans will struggle not because they're not smart people it's just that that it is just uh, the nature of the culture and uh, situation in which you are put and so that's pretty much what the struggles for the people are over here who are coming in they've got to build up a new system a new ecosystem of of survival of friendship of bonds that will be long lasting that might help them succeed Uh, and it is difficult because the language is different the system over here is 100 percent more different than navigating the healthcare system itself is a big big thing mm. and so these are some of the struggles and i think i i like i liked your question when you said it is about cfna using the word peace center but also it's about what what are they you know seeking peace is definitely one part of it stability to their life just for their an opportunity for themselves and their family to survive on a day to day basis without the fear of being killed or being violently disrupted from from where they are and what they are doing and i i i'm reminded by saint paul a message in romans chapter 14 was 19 where he says pursue things of peace and also build each other up and that's what christians like you and i are doing and especially the volunteers and here i have marlene mam who spent so much time volunteering her time at uh, with families coming from these places uh, what we as christian volunteers are also doing is sharing that peace and sharing an opportunity to witness to our uh, love of Christ and by doing that we are building each other up and not only the people who are coming here but also the christian community the volunteer community of uh, of god's people out in service and out in mission building each other up and uh, as pastor stanish just shared you know the, the the refugees who have come here part of building a new life in in St. Louis or in the United States is establishing new bonds, new friendships. And that is where you come in, Marlene. Tell us about the role that you have at Christian Friends of New Americans. Sure. I've been uh, just blessed to have the opportunity to meet families. Initially, we were assigned families by the International Institute to support. But in that process, you know, when you've developed a, a trust with these families, then if they know someone who has a need they'll say call marlene you know she <laughs> she she can help you and suddenly yeah. i have so many people calling me saying i have this problem or i have this friend that has a problem uh, it's uh, what i've been involved in is just everything you can imagine from uh, you know just helping them learn how to go to the grocery store how, you know how to save money you know how to comparative shop you know so that you don't buy the most expensive thing opening checking accounts and rolling children in school being for school uniforms taking them to countless doctor appointments dentists physical therapists emergency rooms outpatient surgeries urgent care you know the needs are are great many of them have been in um, refugee camps for 8 months to a year and had no medical care no mm. dental care yeah. and so they come with with great need to to see doctors and and get care um and you know of course the children all need vaccinations for school and uh, and just helping the families uh, find jobs and to get furniture and clothing and you know and then what is this w2 that you know like you know what am i what is this piece of paper and what is this document that says personal property declaration i don't understand what this means you know the thing is that we just take for granted they have no understanding uh, and taxes apparently taxes are not almost non-existent in afghanistan and they can't understand why when they go to the store you know it's not just $10 it's you know $10 and 90 cents so it's a big adjustment for them yep. 
just culturally. And it's just been just a joy to be able to share just the common knowledge that I have. You know, I'm not, you know, anyone special that is trained to do this. I've only been doing this for about 14 months, but I have a life, life experiences that I can share with them and I can teach them just how, how to survive in this strange culture that we have because it, it is different. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I've just enjoyed that opportunity to do that. Um, you know, I've been able to become very close to some of the families. Um, you know, I had one mom who was expecting a baby. And in Afghanistan, um, the husbands, the men are not allowed inside the hospital when women are having babies. And so... Um, her sister had been a doctor in Afghanistan and had delivered her babies before, but she asked me to be her birthing partner rather than her husband so that her husband could stay home with the children and and kind of keep the culture of just women in, in the room. And that was such a great joy to, to be able to witness that and share that opportunity with her as her son was born about 10 days ago. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, also on the other side, I've had a woman who was suffering a miscarriage and she called me at 6.30 on a Sunday morning and said, I don't know what to do. And I was able to you know, say, take, have your husband take you to the emergency room. I'll be there and spent the time with her there um, as she lost the baby and also arranged for free burial for the baby. And also just a couple of weeks ago, took the family to the cemetery where we were able to find the, the grave and put flowers on the grave. And hopefully that was a closure for this family. And it's someplace now they know they can go if, if they want want to remember their their, their fetus, their, their young child. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, they're just looking for family, for friends, you know, someone who can be there for them in the good times and in the bad times and help them navigate this uh, this culture that we have and the rules and the laws and it's it's just been a joy and an honor to to be a part of their lives and to to uh, to show Christ's love to them uh, because they so desperately just need to find find that love and I'm able I feel like I'm able to be Christ's hands and feet here in this city I can make even if it's just one small difference in the life and the trajectory of these families you know it's something that will last a lifetime long after I'm 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 gone uh, and and just also just this past week I've had lots of opportunities to uh, explain why school is closed on Good Friday what is Good Friday uh, and also Easter you know why was the grocery store closed on on Sunday and I've been able to share the resurrection story with them what we believe and and they are, they know who Jesus is that that is part of uh, the Muslim faith they know him and uh, so I was able to share what we believe as Christians uh, so it's it, there are lots of sharing opportunities lots of opportunities to make a difference in in these families lives it sounds like you're, you've been able to be quite a blessing to these families, which is great. And we have more to share with our friends from CFNA, Reverend Dr. Stanish Stanley and Marlene Schrader. We have to take a quick break. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. I'm Andy Bates. At Concordia University, Wisconsin, we believe you were created for a reason to use your God-given gifts to help others, to live a life of self-sacrifice in a me-first world, to live a life that's uncommon. Whether you're taking one of 50-plus online programs or learning with us in person on the shores of Lake Michigan, you'll be equipped to make an uncommon impact. Learn more at cuw.edu. Concordia University, Wisconsin. Live uncommon. Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. I'm Andy Bates. We have our friends from Christian Friends of New Americans in the studio with us, Reverend Dr. Stanish Stanley and Marlene Schrader, sharing some wonderful stories about just the blessing that, that you guys are, are able to be to all of these new families, learning the culture, learning how, how we function in America. A lot of these things that we take for granted as American citizens that, that you're able to guide them through, which is great. And Marlene, I want to come back to you. You were sharing all of these wonderful stories and 
and how you're able to make a difference. Can you paint a little bit more of a picture of some of the situations that these families are in when they come to the United States? So the the things that, that they're that they've they've had to leave behind and and things that they have to start over doing. Sure, um, there there are many families, and and obviously every family is different. Um, we many many of the families husbands were American were, were soldiers working with the Allied mm. forces, and uh, were career military, um, and so this was not this is just a different world. You know, they have not had a nine to five job, so just learning that process has 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 been new to them. But then there are also families where the husbands were college educated, um, had high level jobs, had they had big beautiful homes in Kabul, and um, they had everything they ever wanted. They they had had no financial need, and now they've come here, and they're starting. As one gentleman said, "I'm learning. I feel like a toddler learning to walk again. Mm-hmm. You know, this is this is all new to me, and uh, just." struggling to find a job to be given a chance because they don't recognize you know there was one gentleman who was a dentist who was a contractor with the US military on a military base which is which put him in jeopardy now uh, and so he is here but his his dental degree is not accepted and so he's trying to start over you know trying to be you know he thought well maybe I'll become a dental hygienist but he found he had to take 21 credit hours of English before he could even apply for that class, Oof. before that program. So it's just, you know, taking whatever job he can get to support his family. Uh, and then, you know, others who who came, I mean, they came with one suitcase for their entire family and uh, just had to leave in a hurry and uh, spent months, months and months on in in one room on on military bases, I know one family had three children. The dad and two boys slept in a full size bed, and mom and the daughter slept in a twin bed for eight months. Wow! And the food was brought to their room. That was that was their life for eight months. And so, coming to St. Louis, they thought, "Okay, my life is I'm free. i you know I've, we've made our destination." And they've realized that. This is just the start of it. You know, the, their problems are not over. They're just starting. You know, how do, I, how do I create a new life here? And how do I make sure that my children have a future? And that is what I think all of them want most of all is for, the, you know, they realize that maybe they won't be as successful here as they had hoped, even though they're hardworking, smart people. But what they want most of all is for their children to be be successful, and that's something I I hope to do. You know, I, uh, you know, I, there's one family that's very into music, and mm-hmm. so I've been able to get some donated instruments, and we're going to try and arrange for hopefully free lessons for them so that they can pursue their that music education. Um, there are other students that just want, you know, they want to learn to write to get how to repair bicycles and get a free bike. And so we're just trying to help the children, you know, have a little semblance of normalcy in their lives here. But it's it's been very difficult for the families. And, and there's constant struggle and worry about paying the next bill, which many of them never had to deal with. Mm. Yeah. You have have shared some great stories of the opportunities you've had to connect with families and to show them love and and welcoming welcoming them as new neighbors. Tell us about some of the the other volunteers who serve with CFNA and uh, the many ways that volunteers get to serve when connecting with families. You know, through the Friend and Family Program, we have volunteers from different churches who have made three month commitments to. Uh, to serve a specific family, to try to help read their mail, open a checking account, help their children get settled in school, help the parents take them to doctor's appointments. And uh, I think that's been, you know, a, an eye opener for many families, not realizing how difficult it is for for these families that come here. And, uh, and hopefully has been a plus, you know, a, a, a great opportunity for them to to share the love of Christ. Uh, we also, excuse me, have 
others uh, who have, you know, obviously serve at the Peace Center and provide lots of opportunities to uh, to teach them to, to drive a car and, and, and the brave volunteers who sit behind the driver's seat when they're first learning to drive, the, that's, those people deserve a special stunt gold star because I've tried that and it's very frightening uh, when, when they forget the difference between the gas pedal and the brake, you know, and yeah. they get those mixed up. Or but, left and right. Left and right. Yeah, left and right. What, no, stop, stop. Uh, but uh, it's, it's just a joy. And, and I think, you know, Christ asked us to uh, serve the stranger in our midst. And uh, our city is full of of strangers looking for connection to someone who will show them the right way to go. And uh, we can always use more volunteers. The needs are coming. The people are coming. They, They, you know... These, this small group that small group of a thousand that came last year, they're just the tip of the iceberg. There's so many people around the world who are struggling and are are looking for peace, a place to start over and raise their families, and and we have an ongoing need for volunteers. Mm-hmm. Um, and what, um, if I could add to what Marlene Ma'am is saying, uh, especially with friend of family, we also have recently started something called as a volunteer companion. It is just a one-off event kind of a thing where. Volunteers can come up and serve. It could be taking a family to the science center or to the zoo or to to any place that they they would like on a Sunday afternoon when they have time. It could be maybe a two-hour commitment to drive somebody to a doctor's appointment and then drop them back home, not necessarily asking them to wait there. But just driving and making that uh, that appointment possible for them. So those kind of events, uh, one-off events, are we are definitely looking for more volunteers to uh, come and help us with those kind of events. Uh, but volunteers, as Ma'am pointed out, uh, we we dig deep into our Lutheran congregations to seek. Uh, friends who would be willing to be in mission. It is not an easy easy task, and we understand that. But at the same time, uh, when possible, and in the little ways possible, I'm sure people c- could join into this in this mission and be a part of something that, that the Lord himself has asked us to do, to love our neighbor and to serve the stranger in our midst. How can people get connected with CFNA for all of these really great opportunities? Yeah. The best way to do it is to just get into our website. It is uh, w.cfna-stl.org. That could be an easy way to kind of just put out a uh, request saying that, yeah, I would love to volunteer. There's also a volunteer page over there where you can see some volunteer opportunities that are available. Uh, Otherwise, just give us a phone call or even just come and visit the Peace Center. It will be fun. Uh, so uh, we are open most uh, most Tuesday, uh, almost all all Tuesday evenings and Thursday evenings from 5, 5 p.m. onwards for our after-school tutoring program. A good day for ESL and especially for driving is Saturday mornings from 9 to 11 or Friday mornings from 10 to 12. So anybody wanting to walk in and see what's happening and meet, uh, meet a few Afghanis and Sudanese and <laughs> and uh, Nepali people, uh, they are most welcome to come and, and uh, take a peek and see what's happening. CFNA-STL.org is a great way to learn more. Our friends today, the Reverend Dr. Stanish Stanley, Executive Director of Christian Friends of New Americans. Thanks so much for being here today, Pastor. Thank you, sir. And Marlene Schrader, friend of family mentor with Christian Friends of New Americans. Thanks so much, Marlene, for sharing your story. Thank you for the opportunity. You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support The Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you. Anytime. Anywhere. Anywhere.